Hey, Ape Nation out there. This is Jim Marin from the uh, Great Canadian Apes, and uh, James is still uh, sick. Thank you very much for your good wishes. And again, disclaimer, um, I won't be able to really edit this video, So, uh, but I did want to get something out there, even though it's extremely late. Uh, it'll be uh, for you there in the morning. So today's uh, price action, down a penny, buck 99. Uh, Boxing Day specials are on. Um, good or bad, they're on. Call your broker. Make sure to that your shares are not being lent out for shorting without your consent. All you have to do is phone whatever broker that you're using. It's up to you, unless you're on margin. If um, you're on margin, then you'd have to come off a of margin uh, to be able to have the exclusive decision uh, to uh, say, no, I don't want my shares uh, lent out for uh, the purpose of the hedgies to short. And so make that call if uh, you haven't already. An in-depth look at Ethereum's position and how this relates to the current prices. Uh, there are all kinds of talk today. Uh, it took me hours to get through it um, regarding buyout theft. And I think I found something which is going to be kind of interesting. So, you know, will the real Jeff Lee Farrell please stand up? And Hedgies, uh, they're continuing to short. Um, and retail traders who uh, are in for tax purposes could be selling off um, to um, uh, for this year end. A look at our weekly options and the target price for hedgies at our par price target uh, for the week. And we want to know uh, what you feel the top 10 meme stocks were in 2021 so if you had a couple favorites that you played that sort of thing please put them down in the comment section uh, I'll do an analysis on it and uh, it might make the top 10 um, on the uh, European market in Germany Prague was down 2.79 percent previous close of uh, dollar or I'm sorry uh, euro uh, 1.86 opened at 1.85, high of uh, 1.96 euros, a low of 1.74, and closed at 1.74 euros for approximately 1.97 US. Uh, here in uh, uh, North America, uh, Prague was down a penny. Um, the previous close was $2. Uh, we opened at 201. Um, it had a nice uh, run up in the you know 20 uh, 10 percent uh, up and then um, actually the spy Nasdaq everything right at that 10 o'clock must have been an announcement negative announcement from the Fed Reserve and uh, so everything uh, kind of came down at that moment and um, then you know hedges kind of did their thing and all of a sudden it's uh, at the exact same spot as where it was yesterday down a penny a big penny though because now a buck ninety nine, big difference in two bucks. Because that's the line of resistance. So we're gonna have to watch for what happens in the early market hours tomorrow and see how that two dollar is it gonna be resistance or is it gonna be support? Volume was fifteen point seven million, and so yes, today's level of actually that was uh, yes support um, was two dollars. Level of resistance was 208. Past levels of resistance have been at uh, 215, 225, 233, 250. Loves to watch for down support, uh, downside after two. Like I was saying yesterday, there's not much down there. Um, so, you know, will it reach buck 49? Who knows? But as long as you don't sell, then you don't lose anything. And at the end of the year, these Boxing Day sales go away. And then the real prices come in in January and so on. Options expiring December 31st is uh, now that we're right on the cusp here. It's like 2% in the money calls, 98% out of the money, 3% out of the money uh, puts, 97% in the money uh, options. Or I'm sorry, uh, uh, puts. So hedges have a lot to gain if they're closing this week. Uh, less than two dollars they will continue to short the stock throughout the week because they likely have shorts from August to October in that dollar range Pr 
prior to the patent announcements that they're going to try and recapture. Um, I was calculating all kinds of other things, and so I didn't make a, a set calculation, sorry for the uh, in the monies, out of the monies, but these are accurate as far as the graphs go. I update those each day. Um, taking a look at Ortex. Seems like they're bulking up for the order book at $1.98. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we're through the two dollars already, so that's something to you know just kind of keep in mind for tomorrow. Um, a short interest change went up again, three and a half percent. Board shares three point nine million, return shares two point eight million. Uh, utilization ninety three percent, cost to borrow thirty one percent, days to cover 0.38, so the hedges can at will um, manipulate the price. Um, shares on loan. Uh, holy smokes, 30.9 million shares on loan. Oh, call your broker. Make sure they're not yours that they're, uh, that they're um, lending out without your knowledge. Okay, They're your shares. All you have to do is phone your broker and say, no, <laughs> I'm investing in this company. And they're driving it down with shorted shares. I don't want it to be, you know, any of ours, right? Yeah. Okay. Percent of free float on loan. Uh, current, almost 30%. It's up 3%. Um, estimated short interest as percent of free float, 16. There's just craziness going on, right? I mean, the difference between the current short interest shorts, which is 18 million, and what is on loan? 31 million? Why is there 13 million difference between shares on loan and what's been shorted? 13 million out of a free float of 100? That's 13%. That's crazy. That's just extra. Stocks don't, or don't even have 13% entire short interest, let alone, oh, I'm going to uh, take this 18 plus another 13 just in case. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. Hang in there. I think the craziness, the, the crazier it is, the more uh, upside this has. That's just me, not financial advice. Um... And this was neat for more attacks, uh, uh, just, a, you know, the global prenatal testing and newborn screening market is projected to be $10.85 by 2027. And they specifically in this article mention uh, and give reference to progenities uh, works, good works within the prenatal testing. Of course, preeclampsia is something in quarter one is supposed to be you know just about ready to launch into market and so they're going into like an 11 billion dollar industry uh, per year it's gonna be awesome take a look at Fintel short interest 15.5 million days to cover 1.19 short interest percent of float almost 15% 3.8 million uh, dark pool short volume. Uh, the dark pool short volume ratio is trading at double what it should be um, at 41%. So all kinds of uh, shenanigans continue for this stock. Short squeeze score, 82.09. Uh, that's 160. Um, 700,000 available at a rate of about 25%. And just go on from there. Okay, so here we, I, it's still going to take me some time to be able to put this together because I spent hours on it today and I'm still confused. If you can shed some light on some of this, that'd be awesome. I'll show you where I'm at. Okay, so let's take a look at this. 
Each financial publication has a different number for shares outstanding and in the float. That's my first confusion. Okay, so Financial Times from uh, our good friends in Europe give shares outstanding of 163 million, and I think that's pretty much where it's at. But and then Yahoo Finance gives 163 million. Fintel gives 178 million. Uh, and I believe it should be at the 178 million because that difference between the 163 and the 178 kind of reflects that 90 million uh, dollar uh, prospectus. And and I did connect with um, Ortex on that, and that was uh, they had that exact same number. Um, this I did put in from their financials, and it showed balance as of September 30th to be 123 million. <coughs> um, shares outstanding and regarding the free float uh, European market has that uh, 147 million um, Yahoo Finance has a float at 96 million um, Fintel and Ortex have it as 104.88 million uh, we're going to go 104.88, I guess. You're going to split the difference here. Um, this is something that uh, I want to be able to understand how many shares does Ethereum Capital own. Okay. Uh, thanks and credit uh, goes out to week underscore scale underscore 6561 from the Progenity uh, Reddit uh, group who uh, put this together based on the various dates of the filings to the SEC. And he came up with, or he or she came up with, uh, they would have a total shares of 107 million, 590 to 88, at a total cost of 440 million with an average cost per share of 410. Okay. Um, when I took a look at the, uh, and so that's there for sure. And when we, you take a look at the, uh, SEC filing that went in on November 26th, you have all these different pages. And I alluded to this yesterday, uh, here, Ethereum of opportunities, three co-invest one LP for 27 million shares and goes to the next page and goes to the next page, next page, that sort of thing. Okay. And so I put that data in here. And, um, but if you total all this up, then that's way more than 100 million shares. It's way more than 60, 70 million shares. And even the percentages that they give is more than 100%. So that whole SEC filing on November 26th to me is totally confusing. And, I'm a pretty good math. I have three university degrees in math, so uh, you're, you know, <laughs> you're at least math related in business. So I have no clue what all of this adds up to. Well, you can calculate it, but it sure doesn't add up to a hundred. I don't know. So if anybody can shed some light on that, that'd be awesome. Okay. Um, based on the Ortex and Fintel data. I, I think it might be in around 67 million out of the total free float of 104. But again, that, that's my work in progress so far. Just wanted to share that with you. And if you have any uh, information to uh, say Ethereum owns this many shares guaranteed, boom, please drop it in the comment section. That'd be awesome. Okay. Shout out goes to 11 Bravo. Uh, awesome part of the community. Um, and he says, James, some have shifted and now shifted to a new narrative that Jaff is trying to pull a buyout theft. And according to one FUD miserable bastard, um, oh, oh uh, Bravo's okay with that. Uh, he put it in the comments, so it's all good. And I agree with them. <laughs> some FUD miserable bastard. Ah! Ethereum wants to hand them off to another one of their holdings, Alvagen, so that they can overtake the Humera market with their biosimilar. I asked him how he knew that. Did Jeff, <laughs> did Jeff tell him at dinner? <laughs> awesome, 11 Bravo, thank you. So I looked into that today. That's another P 
piece of my day that I wanted to take a look at. And getting into Alvo, uh, Alvo Gen. Um, is it Alvo Tech or Alvo Gen? I'll have to take a look at that. But if it, it, I think it's Alvo Gen, but then they also go by Alvo Tech. And anyway, the only thing that I could find is, oh, that's Jeff Farrell. And, and he's selling a, a house on Oak Tree Lane. So here we've got, they're, they're, they're going with Oak Tree SPAC merger. And uh, so I put in Oak Tree and Jeff Farrell, and uh, they're selling this lovely house. I don't know where it is. It's going for three twenty-five. It's been on the market for one hundred and three days. But you know, maybe phone Jeff. It's like, what is this? So like, there was nothing that tied it together. Um, Temple Hills, uh, MD. Uh, I'm thinking Maryland. Uh, I could be wrong with that. Okay. So not this Jeffrey Farrell. So, but in any case, I, I did a lot of, uh, <laughs> will the real Jeff Lee, Jeffrey Farrell please stand up? Um, yes, Jeffrey, uh, through his uh, Ethereum, is w working with many different bio uh, pharmaceutical companies. Um, and, but there was nothing that I saw that put Jeffrey Farrell in with Alvogen or Alvotech or Alvo anything. And in fact, Alvogen doesn't have the patent uh, for Humira. They're fighting for it. They have something different. They're fighting for it, but they don't have it. And, um, but nothing that tied uh, Jeff uh, there. But plus, they put in over $400 million, including likely $90 million in the last month. Are they really going to just walk away from that money? It's like, no, I, I, I can't see it. Okay, so price action for today, it was down a penny at a buck ninety-nine. Boxing Day specials are on. And tomorrow than the rest of the week, watch for a buck forty-nine. I, unfortunately or fortunately you know save the pennies that sort of thing and uh, you can bulk up on shares at a buck 49 holy smokes right anyway um, I bought every dip in the world I don't know if there's any dip left but if you had any dry powder it could be a heck of a boxing week special make sure to call your broker to ensure that your shares are not being lent out without your knowledge bio theft will the real Jeff Leary Farrell please stand up uh, and please send along any information that you have about this because maybe I'm just missing it and please send it on I'll share with the community uh, hedgies uh, they're continuing to short and sell off, and uh, retail traders are selling off if they can um, recoup some uh, tax losses uh, right before December 31st but if they have the good spirit of uh, Prague within to be able if they you know like the stock they're gonna be buying back first week of January so um, look for the bounce you know, the first week of January so the hedges are looking for a buck fifty uh, our price target is going to be between a buck fifty and two fifteen hang in there you, you don't lose anything until you sell right um, very important and, and today yes I, I bought uh, I bought more today yes I did okay um, we want your votes for the top 10 meme stocks for the year 2021 we want you to tell us how you would define a meme stock uh, Prague to me is looking really good long term not financial advice but they have preeclampsia uh, with a 11 billion dollar market a year in the US alone that's awesome um, and they have 
uh, the Humera, they have the uh, in with uh, the diabetes, in with uh, helping the cancer patients, um, uh, partnerships in the works. Holy smokes, a uh, two bucks. What else can you do? Stay away from the short term options. A uh, two bucks, buy the share. Here you go. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.